The close push is one of the most useful and expressive moves we can do, and there are good reasons to use it in most scenes. It's tempting to do slow pushes as often as possible because of the production value, but it's when we stick to motivated pushes that we bring out the story. Most people choose when to push intuitively, but we'll try to put words to that by suggesting that close pushes are for meaningful moments. Most of what goes on in this scene is, of course, not a meaningful moment. Here the red man is talking about something that has no meaning at all, maybe the pizza he had for lunch. But let's do a close push anyway. As he talks about the double cheese crust and the extra layer of pepperoni, the push assigns meaning to the situation, even if there isn't any. But a close push is extremely powerful when we intend to show that something is meaning. As we push in on the man, we know that whatever's happening has special meaning, something is important or significant, or that something is going on, even if we don't know what it is. This by itself is a great use for the close push, because it creates questions of participation, and it tells us we need to pay extra attention. But there are many other reasons to do a close push, and in this chapter we want to create a list of meanings and moments to look for in the script as motivations. This list is not meant as a rule book, but as a guide to find reasons for pushing. We'll look at 11 meaningful moments, which are focus, tension, significance, consequence, opening up, taking in, trying to understand, realizing, trying to decide, resolve, and anticipation. As with all other lists we've made, none of these exist in a vacuum and often overlap or combine. Focus is the most generic form of pushing. As we slowly push in, the attention is elevated, both for the characters and for us, and our senses are sharpened. Almost regardless of what a scene is about, focus increases our alertness. So if we're after a push and we don't exactly know why, we're probably after focus. Focus works well for situations that demand focus of the characters. Here the man is a submarine captain in the middle of a dangerous strategic battle. Tension is similar to focus in that it involves heightened awareness. Here the characters are trying to shut down a leaking nuclear reactor. As we cut between four simultaneous pushes, we're compressing the space between us and the characters, and we feel the pressure they're under. Tension works for any situation where there's emotional or mental struggle. Here the woman is struggling with conflicted emotions about a relationship. As we compress the space, we again create the feeling of pressure. Significance shows that something has a great deal of meaning. Here the woman is giving a speech about something that means a lot to her. As she talks about how many children are suffering from a certain disease and how easily we can help them, we feel how important this is to her. From a more technical blocking perspective, significance simply tells us that something is an important bit of information. Here the man leaves and we push in on a document he's forgotten, and since we're pushing, it must be significant. Consequence is about the seriousness of a situation or the potential far-reaching impact something will have. Here the couple are being informed by their banker that they have lost their entire life savings. We push in slowly as the gravity of the situation begins to dawn upon them and they begin to see how the world looks now. Here the president informs his cabinet that the only remaining option is to go to war. Obviously such a situation is serious and has far-reaching consequences. With or without characters, consequence underlines the potential impact that something can have. Here we push in on a missile that's rigged to explode by timer. Consequence doesn't have to be negative. In this scene, we're pushing in as the characters are watching a monumental event. Here the consequence is how this will change the world forever. Opening up is when a character opens up emotionally or mentally. Here the man begins to open up about his deeper feelings. As he makes himself vulnerable, we push in slowly. 
Opening up works for any time the characters become more sincere and the situation is more intimate. Here the characters are having an honest and sensitive moment as they begin to really connect with each other. In this version, the move is more of a wide push, but the logic is the same. On a more mental level, opening up works for situations where characters begin revealing important information. Here the blue man is being interrogated. As he suddenly begins revealing the information they've been after, we push in slowly. Either way, opening up is about thoughts and feelings coming out from the character. Taking in is about thoughts and feelings going into the character. Here the woman leaves and we push in on the man as he takes in the conversation. This is a typical reaction shot. Here the woman is a senator who learns that she's lost the election. We push in as she accepts defeat. Taking in again works for any situation where a character is feeling. Here the man is in a hospital waiting room as the doctor informs him that his wife isn't likely to survive. Another very obvious use for taking in is when characters are listening. Here the characters are watching a courtroom proceeding. The slow track more directly creates the feeling of listening than a locked reaction shot would. This shot is a good example of mixing motivations because focus, consequence, and significance are equally good motivations for the same move. The last five motivations are really steps in the decision-making process. Starting with trying to understand, a detective investigating a murder is trying to piece together a complex case. On an emotional level, trying to understand is about trying to find meaning and sense in a situation. Returning to the man in the hospital, his wife might have been run down by a drunk driver. We push in as he tries to understand what the meaning is. Also, when a character is nostalgically remembering the past, what she's really trying to do is make sense of it. So as the woman is thinking back, trying to understand the meaning of past events, we push in slowly. Again, trying to understand is excellent for reaction shots. Here the man has been behaving oddly. When he walks out, we push in on her as she stands puzzled. Trying to understand also works when a character is trying to find out if something has meaning. Here the man hears his colleague say something that rings a bell. He walks over to get more information. Where trying to understand is about trying to find meaning, realizing is the moment of breakthrough. Here the detective is given a casual bit of information which happens to be the last piece he needs to solve the puzzle. Here the woman is telling the red man what his friends are saying behind his back. He suddenly sees everything in light of this new meaning. Here the women say something to the man and leave. We push in. As he turns, suddenly realizing the true meaning of what they said. Separate from the characters, we might be the ones realizing. In the same shot as before, the man rushes out. We suddenly hand off and push in on an important document he's forgotten. We might also be realizing something about a character. In the story, the man in the suit has been cruel, but as he forecloses his friend's house and takes joy in it, we realize just how mean he is. Trying to decide is when a character has all the facts and needs to make a choice. Here we push in as the man tries to decide whether or not to quit his job and follow his dream. Here the submarine captain in a standoff with another ship is trying to decide whether or not to fire.
Resolve is when a decision is made. The classic use for this is when a character rises to the occasion. Here the man talks about how he's going to stand up to the fat cats in Washington. The push shows his conviction. Here an army captain is preparing his soldiers for war. We push in as he motivates them, reminding them of the reason for the war and strengthening their resolve. Finally, anticipation is watching and waiting for what will happen next. Here the characters have launched a rocket to destroy an asteroid that's threatening the planet. Their senses are alert as they can do nothing but watch and wait. Here, the parents of a kidnapped child have decided to give the kidnappers the money and are waiting for answers on the exchange. At this point, nothing they do can change the outcome. From our perspective, anticipation is probably the most generic reason for pushing. If we think about it, almost all pushes create this feeling of wondering what will happen next, and it's this alertness of the immediate future that draws us in. So the next thing we need to look at is how the track angle and speed affects the push. A track that is angled directly on the character brings a sense of clarity. But even for direct pushes, it's best to angle the track slightly to get parallax or the move feels like a zoom. Depending on the meaning of the push, angling the track either makes the world more unrestful or it makes the characters more confused. As the engineers try to shut down the reactor, the situation is now both more unrestful and confusing. As the detective has a realization, a direct push makes the realization appear clear. But as we angle the track, the detective has a much more vivid eruption of thoughts, becoming clear at the end. Regardless of the meaning of the push, angle track shows increased mental or emotional activity. As we push in on the man opening up, the angle track amplifies the drama. The most extreme angled push is to have the character turn in the opposite direction of the camera, which doubles the intensity of the push. Here the detective realizes that the killer must be nearby. We get an enormous twisting effect and an extreme realization. But another useful way to look at angled track and close pushes is to see it as changing our distance to the eye line, which will make the shot more or less personal during the move. So as we're pushing in with the track pretty much directly angled on him, we're essentially moving along the eye line and the move is personal throughout. But if we angle the track, we're gradually moving closer and closer to the eye line, which makes the move more and more personal and very effectively emphasizes the push. The extreme of this is to track in from the side. Here we're pushing in from the left and move very hard towards the eye line, making the shot much more personal at the end. But we could actually go even further and track around from the back. So here, the move becomes radically more personal as we make it around to the front. Becoming less personal during a move is not as useful. Here we're starting out personal, but as we move closer we become less personal. This has more the effect of keeping our distance as if there's an invisible barrier we can't move closer then. A better use for this move is to reveal other characters, which we'll look at a little later. The speed of tracking primarily controls the intensity and immediacy of the underlying motivation. Here the man was trying to decide, and the slow track created the feeling of a slower and less intense process. With a faster track, the need to make a decision is much more immediate. To do the same with another motivation, here the man was realizing, but with a slow track it was a gradual and unfolding process. With a faster track, the realization happened much more quickly. For some motivations, a slow track can additionally help give a situation more gravity. 
Back with a president who's made the decision to go to war, the slow track makes the moment appear more heavy or somber or serious. A faster track makes the situation appear more dynamic and mobile, and while it still might be serious, it's not as physically heavy. Finally, let's look at a technical consideration when shooting pushes that can be obvious but easy to forget. Very often, we're using a camera for the push that's already set up for a certain shot size here and over the shoulder. But as soon as we push that camera into a close shot, we no longer have an over the shoulder. Unless we're completely sure of which shot sizes we need when, we're better off shooting three versions. First a full take that remains an over the shoulder. Then a new take that stays a lot close up. And finally a take where we do the push at the right time. With these three options, we don't paint ourselves into a corner and we can always cut wide again. Or close again.